So thank you, uh, Liz Benz from Jack Nadal for this interview. Liz, firstly, can you just tell us a little bit about um, your company and what you do? Jack Nadal brands merchandise, so clients like Facebook, Symantec or Veritas, companies like that, Instagram, need to have gifts that they give out with their logos on. So we brand T-shirts and baseball caps and pens, books and practically anything you can put a logo on and our organic planet range of t-shirts is the one that you did the survey on two years ago yeah you've been working uh with jack nadal for many years can you just tell us a little bit about your role i bought a company called active promotions in 1989 and it was a very small company and we were buying merchandise in the morning and selling it in the afternoon it was a sort of one-man band but we targeted the film industry well i did and then gradually we started to get clients like 20 Century Fox and Warner Brothers and Disney and it grew quite well you know not hugely and then 10 years later we merged the company called Jack Nadell we became Jack Nadell Act Motion and then after more years we became Jack Nadell International and we got rid of the Act Motion mm. and I stayed on uh, after the merger as President International which meant that for this company I am the President International for everything outside of, of, of America I'm responsible for Amir and APAC sales operations everything really Mm. um the company in the u.s is a 120 million dollar company and we are outside of america we're five million dollars so very very much smaller a few years ago as we mentioned we did a sort of an online survey with your clients about the issue of sustainability in terms of your learnings from that and anything that you've uh, applied from that can you share anything at all with us on on that okay well um thing that i learned from that survey that I was very surprised by was a huge impact that it had on our clients' responses that we had, I think we had, our, I can't remember the exact numbers, but something like out of 200 or 300 surveys, we had 120 filled in, which is a lot. And um, people were very passionate about visibility. That was something I hadn't appreciated that how much people would really want to know more about where their product started life. Very, very key to them. Did you manage to change any of your systems or practices as a result of that or is that something that's still ongoing for you well it's always going to be ongoing but i would say that um compliance has become in the last two or three years has become very very important to jack nadal they've employed a full-time person on compliance and all the factories in in china are vetted and that process is becoming more and more critical in other words because people realize how important it is the end client and actually personally i started before you did that survey i didn't appreciate that i could make a difference to somebody in china's life and then you start to realize that if you pick the wrong factory even for your pens you're actually actually supporting potentially supporting someone that has bad business practices as opposed to paying a little bit more maybe and selecting someone with better business practices and I think the other huge thing that's come out of it is the clients themselves said they would rather pay more for um, an organic product that has got a good trail to a good factory than they would to pay something cheaper so I think the culture in Europe has changed from the cheapest possible thing on the market to caring about where the product originated I think there's a change in the culture you have some uh, products that are actually sustainable like your organic t-shirts and sweaters what else do you have that classified as sustainable well um, as I say the emphasis is more on things like that are sustainable so you, for example there's notebook we've been doing books for years you, you know they're pads that's a kind of stationary item it's staple to our business but now you can get them with apple skin covers and so the and, and recycled product and so the trend is slightly more conscientious than it was people are certain companies facebook's a very good example of a company that's absolutely committed to sustainability and they're they're one of our top three clients so it's made us committed to it as well Mm. and how do you sort of integrate sustainability into your sort of new products do you have like a design unit or how does that happen is it just sort of conversations from from you and and the client can you give us a little picture of how you work that in well i think um for example we just had a big project for Facebook because they said they want to have you know they're really focused on that right now that's one of their their key goals so we research it by going to all the vendors that we have and new finding new vendors to find out what everybody had in the marketplace and so when we're going out to tender or we're going out to exhibition we're focusing on the product selection that is environmentally friendly so really you're finding that in the merchandising business there really is a trend 
to bring in sustainability and to bring in transparency and so that demand is leading a change in your business is that right that's right that's mm. exactly right yeah. yeah the demand leading it yeah mm. and do you find that businesses have more of a budget now making those considerations or is it that you're having to uh, be more efficient or cut back in some way to on your profits margins to ensure that sustainability is in that product I would say that the trend very broadly has gone from buying the cheapest possible thing that you can buy with your budget and buying many you know multiple items to buying fewer items but paying a bit more so you know 20 years ago people were buying t-shirts for a pound mm. you know and they might buy one of my orders I can remember was 550,000 t-shirts well you don't see that anymore that sort of budget would buy you someone might want 100,000 really nice shirts rather than do you know what I mean it's a, mm. it's a different different category for the, for the budget the budgets actually I would say are probably smaller than they used to be but they buy fewer items with it so each product itself is a better quality product that's not true of everybody that's just the trend but you have blue chip companies don't you in your uh, in your clientele yeah. if there are still differences in terms of the bigger clients and the smaller clients do you find that the trend is quite consistent across the board i think the trend is certainly consistent in our clients but most clients would say that they want to be doing the right thing it's non-pc to say you know what i just want the cheapest thing on your shelf mm. you know it doesn't that doesn't happen so much i think it does more in america mm. but my market is europe EMEA, and asia and pacific Mm. where people are more environmentally friendly. So if the client says they want to have sustainable products that are organic, which the clients do, every single RFP talks about compliance. That's a very big change in the last five years. You practically would not see an RFP from a you know multinational company without a huge section on compliance. So because the, the big corporates are focusing on it, smaller companies who are their suppliers have to focus on it. So it's client-led, that's what I would say. And in America, it's client-led as well it absolutely is but not every single client is mm. operating that way but they will you know mm. they've got no choice it's socially unacceptable to use child labor now yeah you know and and what happens with the big corporate because of social media you know it's not like some kind of secret that they can keep hidden and they might have one person suing them and it might get into the press within two minutes of you killing a dog on a plane it's all over the world do you think that uh, it's looking to change in america then as well do you think I don't know if you remember, but in 2015, we had this um, uh, transparency legislation coming in in Great Britain, um, you know, where companies had to be transparent about their supply chain. And I think, what do you think about that? Do you think that's changed uh, a lot in in, in terms of the business um, situation in Europe? And do you think that, you know, something like that could help in the US or in your opinion? Well, I mean, I presume they've got transparency laws in America, but everybody's very slow to follow the legislation. You know, know what everyone does the minimum they need to that's the truth mm. but it sets a trend and it starts the ball rolling looking at sort of the products that you supply now what percentage of your products would you say are sort of a sustainable product in terms of you know whether they use natural fibers or they they are recycled or upcycled or so do you have any kind of information like that um well not totally off the top of my head but i would certainly say the clothing is much it, it's leading the way you know mm. you probably I, I can't imagine less any more than 10 percent is now no longer organic or sustainable mm. um I think if you think about pens, for example, pens, anything that come, there are, they're still the cheap end of the market. Mm. So you might find that 80% of the, if you looked at the total number of pens, 80% of the pens are probably not recyclable and 20% maybe are the more expensive ones of the entire amount. Because what you were getting a top pen, you might have a budget for 500. If you're getting a really cheap pen order and someone wants to look, they're going to go, they're the ones that will probably order 10,000. Mm. So if you looked at that, the 500 and the put 10,000 to the 500 together mm. the actual better quality product is in the minority in terms of volume what do you think are your sort of best selling items it varies at the moment webcam covers which become incredible
incredibly popular. Do you know what that is? No, what is that? It's hilarious. It's basically something that you put on your webcam mm. and you can open and close it so that when you're not speaking to somebody, you close it so you're not being spied on. Oh! And so yeah, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, for example, has one. And then once that got out, <laughs> um, the world, everybody wanted one. If Mark Zuckerberg, the head of the FBI, have webcam covers, everyone got a bit worried. And then, you, you know, and that is a cheap piece of plastic, frankly. Yeah. Um, then there's other things like, you know, there's a gimmick like mm. but the latest, sort of the latest gimmicky things are che- normally plastic. And I can't imagine that they are saying, for example, for your mobile phone, that type of thing. Yeah. Then the quality items of jackets and T-shirts and, and polo shirts, sweatshirts, they're pro- they are pretty pretty good, usually organic range, mm. soft cotton more. I think the other thing is people are going to more retail co- quality. And if you're going for retail quality, even in my business, you're going to be going for sustainable products with a good, it needs to be good quality. And mm. then, then the factory needs to be fair wear and all of that. Even yeah. bags, like we sell us millions of bags. Mm. We have, I've seen the reports from the factories in China and they are regularly ordered mm. to make sure that mm. they're, uh, they're not sustainable, but at least they're following the, the legal requirements. What do you think about these gimmicky items that are always going to be needed probably by these, by your clients? Do you think that there might be a, an opening for you to design, you know, an alternative to these gimmicky trends uh, to to bring in, to bring sustainability to that trend. For example, this webcam uh, covers. Is it possible to perhaps uh, make them out of you know recycled fabrics or something like that? And is that something that you can pitch to them and find a, a supplier to supply that? We could do. It, you imagine that this piece of plastic, millions and millions are being produced every day. So it's quite a thing to change it. But I think there's certain I, there's certain products that if we found the right supplier who was say doing a recycling version certainly encourage clients to buy the recycled version for sure I mean our, a good example is plastic but we used to do thousands and thousands of bottled waters that you, you drink it once and throw it away but now the trend is very much um, recycled contain you know drinkware that can be reused over and over again mm. keep cup for example suddenly become incredibly popular rather than disposable coffee cups mm. my, that's definitely affecting my industry mm. um, bags cotton bags as opposed to plastic bags big changes mm. like that ba- plastic bags are illegal in Africa now so I, I saw the reaction to the survey that you did and I was amazed at how engaged people were and how important it was to them mm. and I would say it's more important to them now than it was then yeah yeah would you be interested in doing more research do you think with your clients or yeah I think we should do it again yeah, yeah absolutely yeah 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 great well thank you so much Liv thank you that was really really interesting talking to you yeah you, that's very interesting talking to you I just <laughs> didn't know what it was going to be but that's very interesting indeed